Welcome to Mega 10. I am Monica. And I am David. A quick reminder, please give us a like, hit the bell, and subscribe to our channel. You can also join the VIP front row to get early access to all our upcoming videos. Thank you for being here and supporting us. All right, David. Today we're diving directly into something that a lot of people haven't sat down to think about properly, even though it's probably one of the biggest structural changes that the digital asset world is going to face. And I don't just mean blockchain or crypto in general. I mean the infrastructure that will underpin large-scale finance in the future. It's the entire topic of post-quantum cryptography and how ledgers prepare themselves for it. And what makes this conversation particularly relevant is that XRPL has a design that naturally exposes a lot of advantages when you look at how a blockchain can transition from classical cryptographic systems into quantum safe models without tearing the whole system apart. Yes, Monica. And the interesting thing is that most people are still looking at blockchains through short-term lenses. They focus on transaction speed this week, liquidity flows this quarter, or which asset is popular with retail sentiment right now. But the moment you widen the horizon and think like a bank or a regulator or a central bank design team, the questions become different. They stop asking, who's got the highest TPS today? And they start asking, which ledger can remain operational for multiple cryptographic eras with no account disruption, no loss of balances, no chain splits, no governance failures. Once you enter that frame, XRPL's account and key architecture opens up a full new set of advantages. Exactly. And one of the reasons this conversation matters so much is because quantum computing is not some distant speculative scenario. The timing might not be predictable, but the trajectory is clear enough that every serious financial institution knows they need to prepare for it. And the preparation isn't about trying to guess the exact year quantum machines can break classical public key schemes. It's about showing that your infrastructure has a realistic path Path to migrate safely before that day arrives. That's why regulators increasingly talk about cryptographic agility, not cryptographic perfection. In other words, can your system change without falling apart? And that's where XRPL's design decisions from the very beginning become incredibly important. You know how most blockchains tie the account identity directly to the public key. So if you change your cryptographic algorithm, you basically change your identity. And that means migrating your balances, your relationships, your permission structures, your trust paths, everything. On XRPL, identity and keys are separate. The address remains constant, while the authorized signing keys can rotate, be replaced, or be layered through multi-sign arrangements. That means you can change the cryptographic algorithm behind the keys without affecting the ledger identity or any balances. And that seems like a small design choice at first glance, but when you're thinking about quantum migration, it's a foundation, because one of the biggest issues regulators worry about is operational continuity. They don't want accounts disappearing, trust lines breaking, settlement channels needing to be rebuilt, or issuers needing to recreate their token structures. A quantum migration that forces account replacements would be a disaster for regulated financial actors. On XRPL, they can just change their regular keys or signer list without touching the account itself. The state stays intact. That is exactly what a central bank or a major institution wants to see. Another part that's important is deterministic settlement. Because if a chain has probabilistic reorgs, then every major protocol upgrade carries risks that transactions might be temporarily reversed or uncertainty introduced. So imagine trying to migrate cryptography on a chain that can roll back blocks. That's a nightmare for institutional risk models. XRPL finalizes each ledger with certainty. So a transaction is settled and stays settled. That's a huge stabilizer during any cryptographic transition. Let's bring it back to the specific question we're focusing on. One of them is whether XRPL's key rotation architecture could become a reference model for future financial grade blockchains preparing for post-quantum transitions. When you study what regulators expect, which is a staged approach, a verifiable process, and minimal disruption, the answer is almost certainly yes, because XRPL doesn't require a fork to move from one cryptographic scheme to another. It just needs an amendment adding support for the new key type. After that, each account can choose when to migrate. That's exactly the kind of staged, non-destructive approach that regulators prefer. And the dual signature era is something that you and I have looked into before, that period where both classical and quantum safe key types can coexist. XRPL is extremely comfortable with that model. You can have classical keys and quantum safe keys sitting together in a signer list. You can enforce gradual transitions. You can reduce the weight of classical keys over time. Everything is incremental. That gives institutions a long runway, no forced cutover, no panic deadlines. That alone sets XRPL apart from chains that will need a hard fork. A big question that comes from that is, how will regulators define quantum resilience readiness, and many of them are already thinking about it in terms of government structures. They want to know whether a ledger can upgrade without breaking its own consensus rules. And XRPL's amendment model is simple. Validators vote, 
If the required threshold is reached, the change activates. No chain split, no competing histories. And from a financial infrastructure perspective, that's exactly how a system is supposed to behave. Predictable, coordinated, auditable. And for cross-border settlement, which is one of the strongest use cases for XRPL, early adoption of lattice-based signatures could give it a performance advantage at a time when institutions care less about raw speed and more about predictability. Because quantum-safe signatures are larger, but XRPL's consensus model can absorb that without increasing settlement delays. It doesn't rely on block mining or randomness. Validators just verify signatures. The time between ledgers stays stable. So while other chains might struggle with performance drops, XRPL can integrate new signatures with minimal impact on throughput. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, David. And that starts reshaping perceptions of operational continuity. If institutions see that XRPL can switch cryptographic primitives without changing addresses, without touching balances, without having to rebuild their whole operational environment, then they begin to treat the ledger like they treat core financial systems, something that doesn't break when security standards evolve. That perception is incredibly important for long-term adoption, especially when you start talking about tokenized assets, settlement corridors, or central bank pilot programs. And that leads directly into how XRPL's cryptographic modularity could attract central banks. Central bank digital currency projects have to think in decades, not months or years. They know any currency they mint today must still be secure 30 years from now, and they cannot rely on a single cryptographic standard staying secure for that long. XRPL's design gives them a predictable path. They can adopt classical keys now, then lattice keys later, then whatever comes next, without reconstructing their entire infrastructure. That is very, very appealing from a design and regulatory perspective. It's also worth talking about how compliance audit frameworks could use XRPL's architecture as a benchmark. When auditors need to prove that a system has migrated successfully to quantum-safe signatures, they need an on-ledger record of the key types being used. XRPL supports that natively. You can see the authorized keys. You can see the signer lists. You can verify that PQC keys are in place. On many blockchains, there's very little on-chain visibility into key structures. That makes audits harder. XRPL offers transparency. And then there's the privacy side. A lot of people think privacy and quantum safety are separate topics, but actually they interact. If you move to quantum safe signatures, but you don't have a privacy layer, institutions may still feel exposed. That's why the ongoing research into zero-knowledge based signature primitives matters. If XRPL incorporates quantum safe signatures at the base layer and uses zero-knowledge proofs to preserve confidentiality while still proving compliance, it becomes not just quantum safe, but also privacy aligned for institutional usage. One of the most important systemic questions we have is the risk for chains that cannot migrate without forking. Because the moment a chain needs a fork for a cryptographic migration, it risks splitting its validator community. And if it splits, you have two chains claiming legitimacy. That destroys settlement finality, breaks liquidity, and makes the chain unusable for financial market operations. XRPL avoids that risk altogether. No fork needed, no competing histories, just an amendment and staged key rotation. And that also helps regulators differentiate between speculative chains and operational critical networks. Speculative chains can take risks, they can afford to fork, but settlement networks cannot. Settlement rails must treat their ledger as a continuous, unbroken sequence, and XRPL's design aligns with that requirement in a way that helps regulators see it as a fit-for-purpose infrastructure rather than a speculative environment. That brings us to institutional risk models. Institutions need to factor cryptographic upgrade agility into their assessments. They need to know that if quantum risk accelerates, the ledger they rely on can and transition quickly. XRPL offers that agility. No forced address migrations, no account recreation, no mass movement of balances. That means lower operational risk during transition. And that agility becomes even more impactful when you consider high-value clearing channels. If you combine deterministic settlement with quantum-safe primitives, you have a ledger that can clear high-value transactions without worrying about future cryptographic reversibility. That's essential for any network that wants to support long-term, multi-trillion dollar settlement flows. And the idea of a dual signature era fits right into that. During the transition, institutions can maintain both classical and quantum safe keys until they are confident everything is stable. That gives them predictable controls. And regulators love predictable controls. They don't want abrupt changes. And after that, you begin to see how traditional financial market infrastructures could learn from XRPL. Many classical systems struggle with key rotation. They struggle with governance. They struggle with multi-decade cryptographic planning. XRPL shows what it looks like when you build a ledger that can transform 
transition without replacing the ledger itself. And if XRPL becomes one of the first blockchains to actually execute a quantum safe transition, even if it happens gradually, that could change how the industry classifies it. It could shift from being seen as a fast settlement network to being considered critical infrastructure. Absolutely. And once you reach that level of classification, banks will start choosing between EVM-based, Solana-based, and XRPL-based settlement rails with a totally different set of criteria. They will ask which one can survive cryptographic shifts, which one can migrate smoothly, which one minimizes the risk of operational breakdown, and XRPL's architecture gives it a serious edge. And on the interoperability side, the moment XRPL becomes quantum safe, it forces neighboring networks to upgrade. If a bridge connects a quantum safe network to a classical one, the weakest link determines the security level that accelerates industry-wide migration. So if XRPL publishes clear interoperability standards for quantum safe cross-chain settlement, it could shape the future landscape. And we can't ignore sovereign digital currency projects. Many will rely on external settlement layers for certain functions, especially cross-border operations. They need ledgers that can survive quantum threats without forcing currency migrations. XRPL's path offers them that stability. That ties directly into custodians. Custodians care deeply about survivability. They're not thinking in months, but in decades. They need to know the ledger can rotate keys, replace them, and evolve cryptographically without moving assets. XRPL lets them do that, and that gives custodians confidence. And finally, there's the geopolitical angle. If quantum capability becomes uneven across countries, the ledgers that lag behind become vulnerable. The ledgers that adopt quantum-safe cryptography early protect themselves. XRPL's ability to adapt quickly gives it strategic resilience. That makes it more attractive as a neutral settlement layer for multinational liquidity hubs. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget, there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, Monica. I think we should expand more on how XRPL's structure specifically avoids the operational fragilities that other chains face. Because when you break down the problem, it becomes clear why only a few ledgers are genuinely suitable for multi-decade financial operations. Definitely. One fragility that's often overlooked is the dependence on synchronized network-wide upgrades. If a chain needs all nodes to upgrade at the same time, it risks partial adoption. If half the network runs one signature scheme and half runs another, you get incompatible validations. XRPL avoids that by allowing each account to migrate independently of others. That's a major advantage in a world where financial actors have different risk appetites and timelines. And this independence is crucial for staged rollouts, because you can have central banks migrate early, payment providers follow later, and retail holders migrate at their own pace. The ledger doesn't break. That's an enterprise-friendly model. Another big fragility is the exposure of public keys. Once a public key is revealed on classical curves, it becomes vulnerable to future quantum attack. XRPL's planned approach using post-quantum algorithms keeps future signatures safe, but what's more important is the ability to rotate keys frequently. That reduces exposure windows. And from a regulatory perspective, key rotation frequency might become a compliance requirement. If regulators insist that high-risk accounts rotate keys keys within certain timeframes using quantum safe algorithms, XRPL's architecture is already prepared for that. It's also worth bringing up that XRPL has been moving in parallel on privacy research. The integration of zero knowledge proofs will allow institutions to prove compliance without exposing sensitive information. That might become an essential layer once quantum safe primitives are introduced, because institutions need both security and confidentiality. And it shows that XRPL isn't just preparing for quantum threats, but also preparing for a future regulatory environment that expects higher transparency with better confidentiality controls. That's a rare combination. Now, David, I think it's time to expand even deeper into the concept of cryptographic upgrade agility, because it's the backbone of everything. It's not enough for a ledger to support new cryptographic primitives. It has to support them in a way that fits how institutions operate. Absolutely. Institutions don't want to rebuild their infrastructure. They don't want to rewrite their internal systems. They want upgrades that feel like normal lifecycle management events. XRPL supports that. If an institution wants to migrate from classical keys to quantum safe keys, it can do so internally without changing its reporting structures or client systems. And consider the implications for custody policies. Custodians can maintain existing account identifiers. They don't have to ask clients to change anything. They simply update their signing infrastructure. That's a massive advantage. And when you compare that to UTCO-based chains where addresses are tightly linked to cryptographic primitives, the difference is huge. Those chains will face major migration challenges. XRPL will not. 
Another point is how XRPL's deterministic ledger progression gives organizations clarity on when changes take effect. They can plan migrations around ledger boundaries. That gives them predictable windows. Just a reminder, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also don't forget there is a front row seat waiting for you. Join us here at the VIP area. Thank you, Monica. And that predictability translates into lower operational risk, which is exactly what financial institutions require before they consider a ledger for settlement operations. And if you look at how regulators think about operational risk, they want systems that will not produce chaotic transitions. They want smooth, scriptable migration paths. And XRPL's architecture naturally fits that. And if XRPL completes a quantum-safe migration earlier than other chains, institutions will view it as a model to follow. That strengthens its role in the ecosystem. Yes, David. I think it's also worth exploring how the presence of quantum-safe primitives interacts with XRPL's built-in compliance features like credentials and issuer controls, because those features support regulatory oversight. Yes, Monica. Credentials give issuers a cryptographic way to manage permissions. If those credentials are anchored in quantum-safe primitives, the regulatory layer becomes stronger, and that provides additional trust for institutional and sovereign users. And issuers gain more confidence that their asset management controls will remain intact even if cryptographic standards shift. That's invaluable for long-term tokenization projects. It also helps with future audit requirements. Auditors can verify that issuer keys, compliance keys, and transaction keys all meet quantum safe standards after a certain cutoff. And if an organization wants to phase out classical keys entirely, they can do that while keeping the ledger identity stable. That's powerful. It's all pointing to the same conclusion. XRPL's architecture positions it to become one of the most adaptable ledgers in the face of quantum threats. And once you factor geopolitical risks, XRPL's ability to transition smoothly becomes even more important for multinational use cases. And with everything happening in the global financial system, neutrality and predictability are key factors. XRPL can provide that. Drop comments below and subscribe to our channel. David and I are personas to make content more engaging and relatable. Not legal and financial advice. Do your own research before making any investment decisions. By the way, there is always new research emerging around post-quantum transitions and cryptographic agility, so keeping an eye on ledger-level developments can help you stay ahead in understanding future settlement infrastructure. See you next time.